All right, so let me start off with one simple fact. NVIDIA almost got away with launching the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte, a card that had absolutely no business being priced at $900. Instead, it was unlaunched, unlaunched, and it's now called the RTX 4070 Ti with the exact same specs and a new lower price of $800. Yeah, 800 bucks. But it's not really an $800 GPU because there's no Founders Edition coming out and most board partners will be charging the usual premium for their pre-overclocked custom cards and that'll tack on $100 or more to the price when it's available to buy on January the 5th. So we're right back to where we started at $900, aren't we? This feels a bit of a bait and switch. You see, even at $800, that's still a solid $200 more than the RTX 3070 Ti launched for. So Nvidia isn't doing anyone any favors here, guys. Their pricing needle for GPUs just keeps going up and up and up and up, and it just, Where's it gonna go? It also feels like they wanna minimize the scale of this launch in every possible way. Let me explain. They sent drivers and the cards about a week before Christmas, okay? Uh, and we only got the price during everyone's Christmas vacations. You know, the time most of the tech press should be spending with their families and friends. That's a complete low blow for Nvidia, I mean, Nvidia, if you're watching this, you know what you did. And they're also allowing reviews to come out now during CES, so all the I told you so's or potentially negative press is gonna get buried under an avalanche of tech news. But look, right after the RTX 4080 12 gigabyte was announced, it was pretty obvious the entire point of the card was to push people towards the higher end and more expensive 16 gigabyte GPU. But why? Well, let's start off with this. Say hello to the AD104 core, and in the RTX 4070 Ti, it's fully enabled with 7,680 CUDA cores. Even if NVIDIA is getting amazing yields here, there's no room for error, and that means there probably won't be a whole lot of them. Meanwhile, the majority of the AD104 cores, or the ones that don't make the cut into the RTX 4070 Ti, will actually be used for the RTX 4080 and other derivatives that are going into next-gen laptops. There's another small issue when it comes to using the AD104 core. This thing's only getting 192-bit memory interface. That's perfect for power savings on the laptop side, but on the high-end desktop card, Yikes. It could really limit performance and bandwidth constraint situations like high resolutions or some ray trace games. I mean, sure, the RTX 4000 series has plenty of cache, but there hasn't been a 70 series card with less than 256 bit since, well, 2003, when the FX 5700 came with 128 bit. And imagine, they wanted to charge $900 for this thing before the rebrand. But it is backed up with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and that's a serious step up from the RTX 3070 Ti's 8 gigabytes. One thing NVIDIA nailed is the power consumption of the RTX 4000 series. And no, don't look at these stupidly oversized heat sinks and assume this thing guzzles back a ton of power and produces epic amounts of heat, because it actually doesn't. The RTX 4080 is already a pretty efficient GPU, and the 4070 Ti sips down between 10 to 25 watts less depending on the game. Remember, NVIDIA's Ada Lovelace architecture handles power differently from previous generations. And you can really see that against the ARC's 7900 XT. While the AMD card gets to its rated power limit regardless of what the game needs, the 4070 Ti analyzes the situation and only draws what's needed to hit its optimal frequencies. That means it'll only hit near its 285 watt TGP rarely, but can also go a bit over that rating too. But let's also talk about how Nvidia is approaching this launch because it's a bit different. You see, there won't be any Founders Edition cards as I mentioned earlier, and it will be absolutely tough to actually find one at Nvidia's starting at price. The new Eclipse. Is this? Don't be afraid of the light. It is all mesh from here, my friend. Just reach in for an easy install for anything in the front and look up into the clear sky for anything from the top. Open or close the doors to hide what you started with an all fanless and bright versions of the Eclipse available. The perfect event for now and the future. No better feeling for you or the components. Hey, the new Eclipse G500A by Fandex. Check it out below. So anyways, we've got two cards here, the Asus Tough OC and Zotac's absolutely massive AMP Extreme Aero. Remember when I said about board partners inflating these GPU sizes like someone inflates a tire? Well, just look at them next to an RTX 4070 Ti Founders Edition, a card that had a bit higher TGP. I mean, guys, this is getting absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? 
This is just a lazy heatsink design that only leads to higher prices, more difficult decisions when it comes to buying a case, and next to no benefit for gamers. Basically, these are the same coolers that we've seen with the RTX 4090 and 4080 versions, but on a much more efficient core. Anyways, the Aero is all about swooping lines, a height of three and a half slots, and a length of about 36 centimeters, or big enough that Zotac gives you an anti-sag bracket with it. I'm not gonna lie, I do love the aesthetics of this GPU. Now, while Zotac's card's all about those futuristic looks, the Tough is something you'd want in a bit more industrial looking build. It's a bit smaller overall in length than Zotac's Monster, but the 3.65 slot height is gonna be a challenge for anyone who wants to mount it vertically without smashing right into the side window of their case. Both of these cards have dual mode switches that are set to their OC modes out of the box, but what does that actually result in from a performance perspective? Well, it's impossible to know how much better they are compared to stock frequencies, since we actually don't have a reference clocked card here. Overall though, the difference between two cards is 90 megahertz or less, which really won't make much of a difference in gaming performance. Maybe a few FPS here and there, but even without knowing the prices of these cards, again, if history is any indication, the hundred or more bucks you pay for a pre-overclocked model just isn't worth it, ever. All right, so that sort of sets the stage, but before we get into the benchmarks, here's the system specs that will be used, and I should also mention that we're only gonna be looking at the tough OC version, since the Zotac card came in a bit too late before the holidays to include it here. Meanwhile, here are the GPUs being compared to the RTX 4070 Ti. Um, so, with that out of the way, let's roll. Well, now that you've seen all the individual game benchmarks, let's summarize where things lie with the RTX 4070 Ti against the competition, because it's all over the place. So let's start with 1440p. First of all, you have to remember that this is a pre-overclocked RTX 4070 Ti, and while well, every other card here except the RTX 3090 uses a reference design. So basically, what we're seeing is performance that's about comparable to a stock RTX 3080 Ti. And look, I can talk all day about how Nvidia is launching a $800 GPU, oh, so wait, sorry, $900 GPU in this case that competes with a card that costs $1,200. But honestly, that doesn't matter because it just points towards how overpriced the 3080 was in the first place. The important thing here is how it compares against modern competition. And in that context, it's about 10% or so behind the reference ARC 7900 XT. I mean, no wonder why this thing is priced the way it is right now, because imagine if the tough OC being benchmarked here cost a thousand dollars. That would have been a disaster. And look, pretty much everyone, including us, thinks the $900 7900 XT is overpriced. And the RTX 4070 Ti we're testing is also $900. So this doesn't look good at all. 
at least not in raster performance, and especially when you consider this card has a mild overclock on it. I mean, sure, at some point, there's supposedly gonna be cards that hit NVIDIA's $800 MSRP, but I'm reviewing something that's in front of me, not a hypothetical product that may or may not be widely available. And in 4K, things start to get a bit ugly with the RTX 4070 Ti sinking further behind the RTX 3080 Ti and just getting pounded flat by the RX 7900 XT, especially in those important 1% lows. The crazy thing here is how little relative improvement there is between this new card and the RTX 3070 Ti. We're talking about a bit over 22%, and that isn't gonna fly for people who want this as an upgrade path for ultra high resolution gaming. I mean, we can talk all day about Nvidia's marketing points like DLSS, Reflex, and whatnot, and sure, they're amazing tools to have in any GPU toolkit, but at the end of the day, in an apples to apples comparison, there's really not all that much to recommend here, especially at the tough OC's $900 or even more for something like the Zotac card I talked about earlier. But notice I didn't bring up ray tracing. Well, why don't we actually go through those results? So from those gaming benchmarks you saw, the RTX 4070 Ti is able to claw back a lot of its performance losses to the RX 7900 XT and the RTX 3000 series cards. But let's distill that down into a little bit more manageable information. Because overall, it becomes pretty obvious that the 4070 Ti does hit way above its weight class in ray tracing. It can beat the RTX 3090 Ti, easily outperform the RTX 3080 Ti by a pretty wide margin too, and demolishes the RTX 3070 Ti since it doesn't run into that card's memory limitations. Against the latest AMD cards, well, even without DLSS running, performance is very good. Yet, that was expected since the RTX 4000 series are designed for maximum ray tracing throughput. Raster performance just comes along for the ride. So with the RTX 4080 12GB, Nvidia got caught red-handed, trying to pretend a 70 series card deserved an 80 series price. It was a perfect setup, but no one fell for it. But that doesn't necessarily make the rebranded RTX 4070 Ti a good buy. You see, I can't help but feel like Nvidia is trying to get away with the same thing here, because they can claim an MSRP of $800 all day. Yet most cards like the Tough OC we benchmarked will end up hitting the $900 mark and go upwards from there. Now sure, there might be a few $800 models just to bait us into believing Nvidia, but board partners always, always focus on shipping those premium priced OC models not the bone stock versions. And at that point, the 4070 Ti is simply a good card at the wrong price, especially if you want something to carry you into 4K gaming where it underperforms in a big way. The flip side of that coin is, as usual, Nvidia's huge feature set. If you value technologies like DLSS, broadcast, reflex, better acceleration in most creative apps, and the list just goes on, then you're gonna be more than willing to pay the GeForce premium regardless of competition. And because of that willingness, the cost of buying a 70 series card has just gone up once again. And that's something that I'm sure will make all the accountants at Nvidia and AMD very, very happy. On that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to take away everything that you needed to know about the new RTX 4070 Ti from Nvidia. Let us know what you guys think about in the comments. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Also, don't forget to spend responsibly.